So we're going to start with slide number 28 today. And we had just finished up with um, looking at the different characteristics of solids, liquids, and gases. But they don't always stay a solid, a liquid, and a gas. We know that they're going to change between the different forms. So that's what we're going to spend the next couple days on is phase changes or changes in state. So you'll hear it kind of called both ways. Um, just kind of realize that it's talking about the same process, whether you're going from a solid to a liquid to a gas, a gas to a liquid to a solid. Um, it's all either a phase change or changing that state of matter. Okay, so again, this is slide 28. And we know that with a change in temperature, you're going to get a substance that can change from one state to the other. And the reason that this happens is because you overcome the attraction between the molecules or you increase the attraction between the molecules, depending on kind of which direction you're going. You're going to have more than one state of matter present at a time. And what I mean by this is you don't instantly take an ice cube that's a solid ice cube and it all turns to liquid just like that. So there's going to be a time where you have some of the solid and then you have some of the liquid until all of the solid is finally melted and becomes that new phase, which is all liquid. All right, so melting, freezing, evaporating, condensing, sublimation, and deposition, or subliming or depositing, uh, depending on how you want to say it, these are all typical ways of describing going from one state of matter to the other. And a lot of times it's just kind of like the reverse process. Melting, you are warming things up, right? Freezing, you're getting them colder. Same thing with evaporating and denting, and same thing with sublimation and deposition. So one, you're making it colder, and then the other, you're making it um, get warmer, or it's, it's actually getting warmer or colder. Okay, so again, here we have solid, here we have liquid, and here we have gas. We know those different characteristics of those things um, after the first part of our notes. And so what you're looking at is the idea that you can go from the solid to the liquid and then the liquid to the gas and then vice versa. Notice the direction of the arrows. So when you're going this direction, obviously things are getting colder. When you're going this direction, they're getting warmer. You can see that with the red arrows and the blue arrows. Um, obviously, um, you can increase that temperature or temperature can be removed from those situations. Um, and again, we are not actually changing the molecules themselves. If you notice, the molecules are all staying the exact same. It's just how tightly packed are they, um, how much freedom do they have, how much space is between them. But the individual molecule of water, in this case, is always going to be the same. Um, please notice, too, that when you're looking at this, you are dealing with um, uh, three very different looking states, right? just visibly looking at them, they're very different. It's still all just H2O. The other thing to consider is water is always gonna be kind of our go-to example, just because it it's all around us. We're so used to it, right? It's not something that's unusual. Um, just because water performs or does things at a certain temperature doesn't mean all materials will. So kind of keep that in mind too. Um, sometimes at room temperature, something is going to be a gas. Um, other elements have different boiling points and melting points. We kind of talked about that last unit. I just want to kind of reinforce that again, but we will use water for most of our examples. So here's just another visual. Gas, liquid, solid. So again, here things are getting colder. You can see heat is leaving. These are exothermic processes. Um, notice here how you go from a gas straight to a solid, and that's deposition. And then notice the, on the other side, when heat is being added in or it's taking it into an endothermic process, you go from the solid ice to the vapor and that is going straight. Um, we're skipping the liquid phase in both of those special situations. So sublimation and deposition are special because they skip that liquid phase. And we'll talk more about that. One way that you know that a phase change is taking place is that you see two phases at once. So you see the liquid and you see the solid. Here you just see the solid, or excuse me, you just see the liquid. So the liquid means it's just one phase, there's no change taking place. But if a change is happening, you're gonna have both of those things until that very instant when all of the solid changes to liquid or possibly the reverse, all of the liquid freezes and becomes the solid. So just kind of keep that in mind. Anytime there's two phases present, it's gonna indicate a phase change.
And you can visibly see that here. I see the liquid and I also see the gas version of this. So a phase change is taking place. And if I continue um, to allow this to sit on the heat, right, the, the stove top, um, it's going to continue to go through that evaporation process and allow that liquid to transfer into the solid. Excuse me, the liquid to transfer into the gas. Okay, so let's look at these individual processes. And today is pretty easy, right? We know what most of these common terms mean. Um, they are vocab terms, um, but just use your common sense and always think of water and you should be in good shape. So melting, you are going from a solid changing to a liquid and it's because thermal energy is added and that increases the temperature, which increases kinetic energy. Remember from earlier um, that kinetic energy is motion, so you're increasing the motion of those molecules. And so this allows the molecules to overcome their attractive force and separate. Now, remember, the molecule itself is staying the same. What's changing is the spacing between the molecules, okay? Freezing is the reverse process. So this is a liquid going to a solid and we've had a lot of that outside lately, right, with our weather. And so uh, you get the removal of thermal energy, and that means the temperature is going down, which means the kinetic energy of the molecules is also going down. So now they start to slow down, and as they slow down, they start to come together, and as they come together, that's when they start to solidify. Um, there's not very much space between them. Be they become very tightly packed and rigid, and so they overcome the attractive force between the molecules and they start to come back together, which again, we call this the freezing process. Okay. Um, evaporation is also known as vaporization, uh, kind of depending on the situation. This is where you have a liquid that's changing to a gas. And you can again clearly see this um, we have, we're assuming coffee, hot chocolate, tea, something in this mug, and you can see that turning into um, a vapor or it is going through that evaporation process. Again, this is going to be the taking in of thermal energy. So this is gonna be endothermic, taking it in. And so that means the temperature is increasing, meaning that the kinetic energy is also increasing. And this allows the molecules to overcome the attractive force. So they were already moving around and had some freedom as the liquid. Now they have even more motion and they have more freedom and they are turning into that gas version. So you can see, um, you know, the gas, if you visualize it like that picture showing, it really kind of looks like that, right? Like the molecules have this ability to move and to be, to be free, which is exactly what they do. So they are totally separated from each other, and you can see that here as well. Um, this process will happen at the surface of liquids. If you've ever had like a bowl of water or like a fish tank, you have to put more water in. It's not because something is drinking it, it's because at the surface there will be um, a little bit of evaporation. And this is part of our water cycle, right? It, the amount of water that covers the surface of the earth um, all of that water is going through some evaporation at the surface level, not down deep, but just at the surface. Some of those water molecules are escaping um, from the liquid form and going into the vapor form. So that process is kind of happening all around us, but we can make this process happen more by increasing the temperature, obviously, like we see here. And then condensation, again, is gonna be the reverse of all of this it's gonna be the gas going back to the liquid, okay? And so this is what's commonly seen, like if you have a cold can of pop on a hot day, um, the air around the can is gonna condense and cause those little water droplets to form, that condensation, and that's where you're gonna get, um, you know, that's why your can sweats, we call it. All right, so the removal of thermal energy because the can is cold and it makes the air around the can cold. And then as that, those, water, those air molecules 
slow down, there's moisture in those molecules, those um, vapor molecules, and so as they come closer and closer to that can, they get colder and colder, and as that happens, they start to come more tightly packed, and then they clump together and they form those little droplets. So you can't see the, the moisture, the vapor in the air as a gas, but you can see its effect on this can. Okay. And so again, you see that this process and the, the um, freezing process have the same description. The liquid, uh, the evaporation, and the melting have the same uh, description. So the same process is happening. It's just going from, are you going from the liquid to the gas, or are you going from the solid to the liquid, right? So it just kind of depends on which state of, of matter you're, like which direction you're going in that process. And so I'll go back real quick. So like, which direction are you going? Are you going from, you know, where you're, you're um, losing heat going from the gas to the solid, or are you gaining heat in that endothermic? Right? So which, which direction are you going? But you know, over here, the description's gonna be the same, and over here, your descriptions are gonna be the same. Okay, so let's get back. Oops. All right, so um, hopefully this doesn't happen because it could get a little bit chilly right now, but let's say an ice storm knocks out your power, um, and so you have to light some candles. As the melted wax drips off, it solidifies as it cools. Would this be considered freezing? So look at our definition of freezing, and does this match? Okay. And if you think about it for a minute, does this qualify as freezing, even though it's at room temperature, if you are going from a, um, a liquid, and then you can see like as it starts to get solid again? which would match what an ice cube does, right? Or, or if you have liquid and you put it in the freezer, excuse me, go that direction. So you're looking at the liquid changing to a solid. Well, technically the liquid wax becomes solid. So if you said that, yes, this would be considered freezing, you're correct. Remember how I said not everything has the same freezing and melting points um, as water does. So even though we use water as such a common example, we don't want to get totally caught up in the temperature situation because water has its own unique boiling and melting and freezing points and all that. So do other substances. So even though this is at room temperature, this would be considered freezing. Okay, so I just wanted to check. We are going to stop there in our notes today. So um, make sure that you're following along in Google Classroom. If there's anything else that it says that you need to be doing for today, make sure you do it or you have already done it. Have a great rest of your day. See ya.